I'm a teacher at Maquoketa High School, and I've been honored to introduce Senator Barack Obama. I'm here today because I think it's important that we have a president who is willing to level with us about the biggest challenges we face in this country. For the past six years, we've, we've had one of the most secretive presidencies in American history. And it's done a lot of harm. So I've gone to different events and spoken with different candidates, and I've paid special attention to who's willing to say what they think and be candid in, direct, in answering the questions. A couple weeks ago, I was at a forum with Senator Clinton and had the chance to ask her what she would do to protect Social Security. She gave a lengthy response that didn't answer my question. And I got the feeling she really didn't want to answer my question. After the forum ended, she came up and spoke to me. It was nice of her to do that, and I appreciated her taking the time to do that. But when I asked my question again, hoping she would answer it, this time she gave me a conflicting response. It left me feeling disappointed because I just didn't understand why she would tell me where she, would, where she stood on an issue this important. It made me wonder if a candidate won't answer a question on the campaign trail, how can we be sure she'll be honest with the American people when they're president? Now, Senator Obama is just the opposite, in my view. When I had a chance to ask him a question in Maquoketa recently, he gave me a clear and direct answer. He took about 10 minutes to explain his five-point position, and he made me feel like I was the only person in that room, and I appreciated that. So when I look at important issues today, like the Iraq War, health care, social security, education, and many others, I have to wonder which presidential candidate will always level with me and the American people. To borrow a phrase from Senator Obama referring to the Iowa caucus goers, he likes to say, we, we folks here in Iowa, like to kick around the tire, kick the tires of a, and look under the hood of these candidates. Well, I've done that. I've completed my test drive. And I'm sold he will be forthright and honest to the American people. So I'm announcing today that I am supporting Barack Obama, and I encourage you and all the common folks like us to support him also. So with no further ado, let me introduce Barack Obama. Uh, I did want to say a few words about one of the issues that I think is most important in this election. And that is, how can we make sure that after a lifetime of hard work and honest living, folks are rewarded with a secure and dignified retirement? Now, this issue is a personal one for me. Uh, as some of you know, uh, I was raised by my grandparents. And I always think of them as America at its best. Like some of you, my grandfather enlisted after Pearl Harbor. Uh, he joined part Patton's army, became part of that arsenal of democracy that defeated Hitler. Uh, while he was away, my grandmother, who had just had my mother, served on a bomber assembly line. Uh, she was one of the Rosie the Riveters uh, that helped uh, the wartime effort at home. They worked hard all their lives, and they earned a secure retirement. Uh, and for those seniors in the room, so have you. But the fact is, a secure retirement is being threatened today. 
Part of the reason is rising costs. I don't have to tell any of you this. You feel the pinch every time you fill up at the gas tank because the price of the pump has tripled over the past several years. You feel it every time you go to the pharmacy and find that you're paying more for the same drugs that you were this time last year. And that's why last month I announced my tax cut for America's seniors. It's a plan that will eliminate income taxes for about 7 million seniors making less than $50,000 a year. And 22 million more won't even have to file a return, which also means you won't have to hire an expensive accountant. But if we're really serious about making retirement security a reality, then tax breaks aren't enough. We also have an obligation to protect Social Security and ensure that it's a safety net the American people can count on today, tomorrow, and forever. Social Security is the cornerstone of the social compact in this country. It's lifted tens of millions of older Americans and their families out of poverty. Here in Iowa, more than 95% of seniors rely on their monthly Social Security checks. So we know what a difference it makes in people's lives. But we also know that the system has problems. Some argue that the problems are severe and that Social Security is fundamentally broken and needs to be overhauled. That's President Bush's argument. That's an exaggeration. The underlying system is sound. The actual problem is a projected cash shortfall that can be readily solved. But the longer we wait to solve the problem, the bigger it grows. If we do nothing, annual surpluses will end in 2017, and the trust fund will be exhausted by around 2040. Now the question is how to solve this problem. You might remember that this came up in the last presidential debate. Uh, and when Senator Clinton was asked about it, she wouldn't say what she thought needed to be done. Uh, the other day here in Iowa, she skipped another chance to give a direct answer on this, uh, just like Todd mentioned a few minutes ago. But she's not alone in avoiding answering this question directly. She's not alone in ducking the issue because conventional thinking in Washington says that Social Security is the third rail of American politics. It says you should hedge and dodge and spin uh, but at all costs, don't answer. I reject that notion. I think that on issues as fundamental as how to protect Social Security, a candidate for president owes it to the American people to tell us where they stand. Because you're not ready to lead if you can't tell us where you're going. So let me tell you what kind of leadership I will offer as president. First, I believe and have argued repeatedly in the past and will continue to argue that privatization is dangerous. It tears the fabric of Social Security, the idea of mutual responsibility, the idea that this is a social insurance program that is there no matter what by subjecting a secure retirement to the whims of the market. That's why I fought President Bush when he tried to dismantle Social Security and divvy it up into private accounts, and that's why I will fight privatization efforts as president. Second, I do not believe that we need to cut benefits or raise the retirement age. There are a number of ways we can make Social Security solvent that don't involve forcing seniors to bear a heavier burden. The best option, in my view, is to ask the highest income Americans to contribute a little bit more by raising the ceiling that's currently paid on the amount of earnings subject to the Social Security tax. Let me explain this as specifically as possible. Right now, the Social Security payroll tax only applies to the first $97,000 an individual makes. So I know this guy in Omaha uh, named Warren Buffett uh, who made $46 million last year. It was an off year for him. And he stops paying uh, after one five hundredth, one one thousandth of one percent of his income. Uh, I'm not sure I got the math perfect there. I probably should have done this ahead of time. Uh, here it is. He hits his first, okay, yeah, that's right. Uh, so after he hits his first $98,000 of, uh, of income, he stops paying. And the remaining $46 million, he doesn't pay 
a cent of payroll tax on. On the other hand, anybody who makes $97,000 or less, they're paying payroll tax on 100% of their income. It's not fair. It doesn't make sense, and I think that that is probably the best way for us to fix it. I also believe that to strengthen the program over the long term, we need to stop borrowing millions from the Social Security Trust Fund. Uh, and that's why I will stand for a return to fiscal responsibility as president. But the fact is, we will not be able to solve this problem and protect Social Security once and for all until we stop treating it like a political football and start treating it like the national treasure that it is. Coming together to meet this challenge won't be easy. It won't happen overnight. It will take restoring a shared sense of purpose in Washington and across the country. But if you put your trust in me, if you give me uh, your hand and your heart, then that's exactly what I intend to do as your next president. So with that, let me just open it up for questions and comments. Thank you very much, everybody.